sunshine. So glad you could join us today. We hope you have a wonderful day as we go with songs and story and a memory verse. And we hope that you have a wonderful time learning about God with us because we're wonderful heroes for God saving the world. See you later. Thank you.
boys. Do you remember last week we learned that Jesus had risen from the dead and then he ascended up into the clouds and disappeared right while he was standing talking with the disciples. Where did he go, I wonder? Well, he went to heaven and he went up to the Father God and he had the blood that he had sacrificed on the cross as a way of putting it on the mercy seat in heaven. It's a reminder that forever our sins are forgiven. And then it says in the scripture that Jesus sat down on a throne, not a chair like this, but something very royal and regal, and he sat down at the right hand of his father and he was given all authority. He became a king and a ruler on his throne, full of power, full of authority for all the things that he'd done to set us free from sin and to cause us to be able to enter the kingdom. He was forming a kingdom, a rule of which us as the Christians could be part of as he was in control as the king and the ruler. Now, no one knew where Jesus was. They had all just seen him disappear into the clouds, but nobody really knew what happened to him other than that he'd gone to heaven. But there was a man called John. He was one of God's, uh, one of Jesus' disciples, and he had been captured and he was being held on an island, the island of Patmos. And on this island, while John was there, he had a vision. And a vision is like a dream, but it's when you're awake. So he, John was seeing pictures like you see in a dream when you are asleep, but he was fully awake. So he was having a vision. And in that vision, it started off with a trumpet sound. <laughs> trumpet sound that captured his attention and it was actually a voice it was the voice of the holy spirit speaking to him like a trumpet capturing his attention to tell him and show him something absolutely amazing that nobody had seen before while alive he was going to see into heaven itself the voice that john heard told him to get a pen and paper they didn't really have pen and paper back then. It was more on papyrus paper and ink and stuff. But he was told, write this down. What you see, write down. And then when you've finished writing everything down that you see, I want you to send it to all the seven churches. And then he named places where all the churches were. So John got his ready and he was ready to write everything down that he was seeing. Now John wanted to see who was speaking? Who had the voice of the trumpet? <laughs> Big, boomy voice. Like a trumpet. And so John wanted to see who it was. So he turned around. He was expecting to see the person standing there speaking that had the voice like the trumpet. But instead, he saw a giant candle stand or lamp stand. And it had seven. This one's only got three. One, two, three. But here's the one that he saw had seven big lampstands standing there. And they represented the seven churches. The candle stand represents the seven churches. The one that John was to write to, the seven churches, all placed in seven different places, representing the light of God in the earth. When John turned, remember he saw the golden lampstand, but standing in the midst of the golden lampstand, was the son of man. He looked like a man. He was actually seeing Jesus, who is God's son. But remember, he left his godliness behind, took on the form of man. And there he was, standing in heaven as a man, full of the glory of God. And he'd taken up his throne again. And he was wearing a robe, a long robe that went all the way down to the ground. And it says in Revelation 19, verse 13 and 16, 
that it was stained with the blood of Jesus. You know, blood is red, and so it was the color of red to remember the sacrifice that Jesus had made on the cross when he'd shed his blood for our sins. Just like the lambs used to have to be sacrificed to cover the sins of people, now Jesus had done it. And so he was this lovely robe, red robe to remember the blood that Jesus had shed. And it had also had a name written on it. On the robe was written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. In other words, he was the ruler above all other rulers. Above all other kings and lords and important people, he was the ruler above them. And it was written on his robe as such. And also, he was girdled around his chest with a lovely gold sash that was wrapped around him. In Psalms 93 verse 1, it tells us that that sash represented his majesty, the power and the glory of a king. And it had full of, displayed its strength and it displayed security and praise to him and to his glory. See, with gold, represents such beautiful glory. And so here he was covered in this glory, representing how majestic a ruler he was. And it's over his heart because his heart was that of a king. His heart was that of strong strength. And his heart deserved praise. And he gave security to all mankind through his heart, his good heart, his majestic and kingly heart. And then it tells us that his hair was white. That word white actually means light. So his hair was white like wool. See how curly this is? Like a bit like a sheep's wool. His hair was like white and it was like snow, as bright and as white as snow. I don't know if you've seen snow, but it's very bright, very pure. It actually sparkles so beautifully because it's so pure and clean and bright and white. And it's describing his hair. Our hair represents our beauty, but it also represents authority as a symbol in the Bible. And it was saying that God's, Jesus's authority was pure. It was white and it was like light because he was part of the kingdom of God and God's son. And remember, God is light. And so it's no wonder that his hair was like light white and pure and his authority is that too it's pure and it's light and clean and it's also powerful then there's a description of his eyes now i've got blue eyes i don't know what color your eyes but jesus had eye color that none of us have ever had it says it was like a flame it was bright and white like a flame wow look at that the power Another description is that his eyes are like in love with us, a fire in love with us. And his eyes, the things that he sees, the things that he's looking at, he's got sharp looking and seeing of things, just like a fire, right? When we turn a light on or a fire or a candle on in a dark room, it reveals things hidden. And his eyes could see everything. They revealed everything hidden. He knew everything and his eyes were like fire. Also, it tells us that Jesus' feet were like burnished bronze when it's glowing in a furnace. Now, I can't show you what it's like to have metal that's glowing in a furnace, but it glows orange bright orange and it's really bright and so it's saying that Jesus's feet the place where he walked well we all know where he walked he walked here on earth for us he took on our form and he lived life like us he walked on earth and so it's saying the place that he walked symbolizing his feet was actually glowing like it's been in a fire now he was like a burnt offering something that he gave to God as a sacrifice. He sacrificed his life like the sheep used to be. They used to be sacrificed on an altar and then burnt to the Lord. And so his life was like a burnt offering to the Lord. But his feet weren't just representing a fire of being burnt, but they were glowing. It was glowing. And that glowing symbolizes the gloriousness of who he is and what he'd done for us by walking and taking on the form of man and living like us. He was glorious. Then, as he spoke, 
it was oil. Um, it was um, it was like the sound of so much water banging together, the water tumbling together. And that symbolized the nations. In the Bible, there's lots of symbols. And the symbol of um, water is for the nations. Many waters is referring to them, the waters that are all around the earth that cover and surround every nation that's on the earth. Every, if you look at a map of a globe, you'll see there's water around every nation. And so that his voice sounded like many waters was to symbolize that he was representing the voice of all the people in every nation all the way around the world. That his voice was for them, not against them, and he represented them. And he was, as a man, a human being, he was the first, the Bible tells us, the first Adam, the beginning of a new nation of people. Just like the original Adam and Eve were the beginning of all the people that were ever born, well, Jesus was that too. He was the first Adam, an Adam that represented righteousness and that represented being a child of God. And for all the people around the world that came to be believers, he was their voice. We are his voice here on earth and he is our voice. Then, then John saw that in his right hand were seven stars. There were seven beautiful stars that Jesus was holding in his right hand. They represented angels. Now remember the lampstand had seven churches, uh, seven was representing seven churches. Now the stars represent the angels that are over the churches that report between heaven and earth what's going on in the churches. And there's seven churches and there's seven um, stars. Stars representing the spiritual beings of angels. It also tells us that out of his mouth, out of the mouth of Jesus, came a two-edged sword out of his mouth. Now that two-edged sword means that both sides, two-edged means both sides can cut. So it means that it's very sharp. And he was saying his mouth had a two-edged sword. Well, we know in Hebrews, in the Bible, in 4 verse 12, it says the word of God is living and active and it's like a two-edged sword it's able to divide between right and wrong right down to the very heart of us and so it's saying that the word of god that comes out from him is accurate and it's sharp and it, it deals with any lies or deceptions or sins and it shoots forth that from the, the words from his mouth and it, it cuts away any wrong that's being done it also said in, said in the bible that jesus is the word of god and so we've got to think that when somebody speaks, out of their heart, they speak words. And it's telling us that when Jesus speaks, whatever words come out of his mouth, not only are they sharp and, and alive and active, but they carry his heart. They carry his, who he is because he is the word of God. He became the word of God when he fulfilled all prophecy and all the prophetic words that the Father had said, Jesus became. And so he is that word of God. And so out of his mouth, the words that he now speaks, it's like a sword going forth, cutting away any wrong, dealing with anything that the enemy might bring and, and dealing with that. We are told that his face is so bright, it's like looking at the sun. And we wear sunnies to stop our eyes from hurting from the sun, don't we? Because the sun is so bright to look at. But all of Jesus' face is bright like a sun, really bright. And it's luminous. And the sun is really um, uh, difficult to look at because it's so bright. It actually is not good to look at the sun. Never look at the sun. It can burn your eyes and do damage so you can't see. But it's so bright. It's like a big ball of fire that's up there producing all this light. And it gives light to the whole world. And it lights up everything. And it's the source of life for all of us too. Without the light, we would all get too cold and die. And plants wouldn't survive. And animals wouldn't survive. So the light from the sun gives life to all of us that are in the light of the sun. And it's very bright. 
But there's some other very interesting things about um, Jesus being identified as, as being radiant like the sun. Because it says in Isaiah 53 too that his face wasn't very attractive at all. It was nothing special, nothing to look at. He was a very average looking person while he was on earth. And then it says in Isaiah 52 4 that it was so hurt, his face was so hurt when he was dying on the cross and the proceeds of what they did to him that it was so hurt, it was very disfigured like no other person had ever been. Very hard to recognize. And yet, in heaven, it no longer looked plain, it no longer looked hurt, it looked glorious and bright like a sun, shining brightly. Now, all of this looks pretty strange. I would look very strange to be all those things. I look a bit strange now with my sunnies and my white hair on and, and dress the way I am. But I'm only trying to give you an image of how powerful Jesus looked. Jesus looked all glorious, all powerful. If you can imagine a person whose eyes looked like fire, whose hair was pure white, whose face shone like the sun, who was wearing majestic robes, it's very powerful looking. And so that represents how powerful Jesus was. That's how glorious Jesus was when John was looking at him. But he's still that glorious right now. And John, when he realized how powerful Jesus looked and what he was seeing was so amazing, it says, he fell like a dead man. Oh, he fell to the ground and Jesus touched him with his right hand. He reached out and touched him and said, don't be afraid, John. It's all right. I am. Now, that's the name of God, isn't it? I am the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end of everything. I am the living one. I once was dead, but now I'm going to live forevermore, forever and ever. And don't worry, I have the keys of death and hell. So go and write down everything that you've seen and write it down all the things which are and all the things which are going to happen in the future. Because John didn't just see Jesus standing there glorious. He continued to have more and more vision that he wrote down in the book of Revelation. And this story of Jesus and how he looked is from the book of Revelations, chapter 4. I hope that you have a chance to read it because it's wonderful to study the Bible. There's so many mysteries and wonderful stories inside the Bible that we can learn from. But let's pray together. Jesus, I thank you that you came and gave up heaven and all its glory and your godliness and took on the form of man and became like us. But all the things that you did for us here on the earth, through the cross, through your death, through your resurrection, through defeating the enemy, you haven't stayed marred and hurt. You came triumphant, glorious again. And you sit on a throne and you rule over your kingdom, the church. And you rule over all those who love you. And that you have all power and all authority and all dominion. And you're fully glorious and beautiful to see right now. And we thank you that we get the privilege of understanding just a little bit about how wonderful you are. Amen. Well, it's time for our memory verse, boys and girls. And we're looking at the memory verse. And I've put it way up high up in this building. It's very high up. I'm a tall person and it's hard for me to reach all the way up there. And so just like Jesus, when he rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven, he goes all the way up and he's up in high places. He's been given all power, all rule. There's nobody higher than him. There's nobody more authoritative than him. Nobody more powerful or glorious than him. He is really high up there. And so we put the memory verse to symbolize that. But let's read the verse together. It says, Ephesians 1.20, God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. 
Jesus is seated because he's finished all his work and he's now at rest and he's sitting right beside his father who's also very powerful and very glorious because he's God of all and he is the I am of everything. He created everything and he upholds everything and he's sharing his throne, his power, his right and dominion with his son Jesus. And that's why he gave him a throne to sit at his right hand being all glorious and powerful. Now I'm going to remove a couple of these words and we'll see if we can remember it together. So, oh, I reach up there and I've got one and here's another one. Oh, and oh, that one I got. All right, let's read it together. Ephesians 1.20 God raised who? Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. Did you get that right? It's hard when some words are gone, isn't it, to remember it all. But it's still very powerful words. Let's try one more time to remove some. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I got that one. I have to jump to reach it all. Oh, from the dead. All right, and we'll go. All righty, here we are. Ephesians 1.20. Who was it? God raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. How wonderful is that? Well, I hope you have a wonderful week and that you join us again next time. See you for now.